the first, you know, module of this session, sort of uh, at the end of Matteo's slides, he introduced the importance of tax havens and how it's showing up in many parts of the literature and, and is a first order issue when trying to understand data on, uh, uh, you know, capital flows and international investment positions. And so that's what I'm going to be starting. Uh, this will be a two module sequence. I'll try and give a very quick, you know, 13, 14 minute intro and, and, and save a minute or two for questions, but then Matteo will, will build on that. And after those two sessions, we'll have more time for Q&A. Um, but let me just start with a, a simple uh, schematic on at least how I, prior to starting this project, uh, which is with Antonio Coppola and Matteo Maggiore and Jesse Schrager, how I started, uh, you know, I, I would have thought of international capital flows. We talk about why countries should open up to foreign investment. And, you know, I would have thought to myself, a country like Brazil is a perfect example where you know, presumably a capital intensive giant energy firm like Petrobras here, you know, would be borrowing directly from Americans and directly from Europeans. And I figured that would look like an American over here, you know, um, buying securities issued directly by this Brazilian firm or Europeans over here doing the same. But it turns out when you actually dig into the data and uh, the data that we used is, is what Jesse, for example, just presented, uh, you know, these position level uh, uh, data on mutual fund and ETF holdings in the US and in the EMU, it's actually striking. You see basically no direct holdings of securities issued by uh, the Brazilian Petrobras parent firm. Um, held by American and EMU investors funds. Now, it's not that you don't see any uh, interaction between these entities. It's just that you find that they're intermediated through uh, offshore affiliates and, and quite typically in tax havens, which will be the focus here. So what this slide is showing you is that you do see big flows uh, from the U.S to a company called Petrobras International Finance Company. That's what Jesse just talked about in his example uh, in the last module as well. And this is of course a Cayman Islands resident firm, an affiliate of the Brazilian company, but not the Brazilian company. And this affiliate in the Cayman Islands, of course gets a whole bunch of money from the Americans. It gets a whole bunch of money from uh, the Europeans. And it's not just this Cayman Islands affiliate, you actually see the same kind of intermediation rooting of this funding through tax havens. If you look at Petrobras Global Finance and Global Trading, which are affiliates of Petrobras, but that happen to be located in the Netherlands. Okay, and so as a practical matter, you know, when we think of companies opening up, particularly emerging markets, opening up to foreign capital, you know, one thing that, that, that this work and others is showing is that what that means in practice to a large extent is foreigners, developed country investors, uh, buying securities issued through these tax havens. So, you know, Jesse introduced what a QCIP was. I think of it as a barcode for a security. And this is just one example of such a QCIP where the, the immediate issuer happens to be that PIFCO, that Petrobras International Finance Company in the Cayman Islands. And one reason why this configuration that we just showed um, is, is of interest, of, of importance, is it can wreak havoc on the international statistics that we rely on to understand what global portfolios look like. So in most uh, official data sets, and I'll, I'll, I'll get to this a little later, most organize the statistics following what's called the residency principle, which means that you associate a bond issuance with the geography, with the location of the most immediate issuer. And so in this case, that transaction I showed you earlier would look like an American investment or a European investment in a Cayman Island bond, and in particular in a financial sector Cayman Island bond. Whereas for most purposes, for most deep economic questions, when we want to understand that flow, you know, we would rather associate it as um, a position taken by American or European investors in the Brazilian energy sector. And so let me elaborate a little bit now and just note that, you know, it's going to be quick. So the, the deeper material and most of the analysis underlying what I'm about to talk about comes from this, this joint work with Antonio, Jesse, and Matteo.
So first question that all this might raise is why are these firms doing this? Why does Petrobras or other firms issue in tax havens? And uh, the first thing I wanna be clear on is there's many different reasons. And uh, you know, it might be, for example, it might be that firms are trying to avoid taxation and that could be uh, legally doing so, which would just be tax minimization. It could be illegally doing so, which would be tax evasion. Uh, both uh, motives might lead a firm to try to issue through a tax haven affiliate. It might be that the firm's trying to avoid capital controls. It might be that the firm wants to avoid regulation or minimize regulatory costs, or even access a different investor base than what they could otherwise access. Let me take you through these four examples, um, just giving you a simple example uh, relevant for each of these four. But what I wanna claim is that depending on the purpose of your analysis or depending on what one's research question is, the distinction across these four motivations may or may not be important. For example, uh, many questions, most questions I would argue of economic interest doesn't care which of these four motives would cause a company to issue through the Cayman Islands, let's say, because most analyses would never want to associate that capital raise with the Caymans itself, since the Caymans is such a tiny company, uh, country with very little economic activity and a GDP you know, on the order of $2 billion. Well, let me give you an example on this avoid taxation. It's perhaps the most natural thing people think about when you think about uh, the desire to issue through a tax haven. And what I'm showing here is just uh, you know, an illustrative plot. The blue line just shows um, the total US holdings of equity positions of firms that are considered Irish. And the red dot is our estimate of the holdings that in fact are firms that are US firms in the sense that that's where their operations are, that's where their sales are, that's where their employment is but where they've switched their headquarters company, uh, excuse me, their headquarters location to Ireland to save on corporate profit tax, you know, corporate taxes on their profits. Now that's not the only form uh, or, or way in which a company would use a tax haven to minimize taxes. Uh, it's also the case that there are withholding taxes, uh, withholding requirements on the payment of dividends to foreign bondholders and, and interest to foreign bondholders. So for example, in the same way that the University of Chicago withholds some of my labor income on the basis that it needs to be used toward my labor income taxes, companies have to withhold interest payments to foreign bondholders on the basis that they're withholding as part of that bondholders uh, capital income tax. And certain countries have more onerous rules than others. Tax havens, of course, have you know, very easy lax rules, oftentimes a withholding rate requirement of zero. And so another reason to issue through offshore affiliates and tax havens is to minimize the tax exposure uh, or the withholding taxes uh, on behalf of your bondholders, your, your investors. I won't dig into much detail here. Uh, I'll instead let Matteo do so in the next um, module, but another major category um, of firms that issue through tax havens like the Cayman Islands are gonna be Chinese firms that actually issue equity through affiliates that are offshore. And they do so to avoid capital controls. For instance, if I want to, as an American, buy you know, an equity share in uh, a firm in China that's operating in a strategically designated industry where that's not under normal structures required, um, there's been this devised, this structure, or I shouldn't say required, allowed. There's been this structure that they've devised called a variable interest entity structure, whereby you know, I can do it. I can buy a share in a Cayman Islands located offshore affiliate uh, that is, you know, in a um, circuitous way, but linked to the onshore operations in China. That's another big category of these offshore issuances. Another is just to avoid regulation. To give you sort of a picture of this, you can see there was an example, um, a market abuse regulation passed in 2016 that applied to most European uh, jurisdictions, but not the Channel Islands, which are constituted by Guernsey and Jersey. And what the plot is just showing you is that a bunch of firms uh, that issue high yield bonds uh, that's denoted in the red line, you know, that basically 
didn't use the Channel Islands uh, at all, either to, to locate there or to issue their securities, um, began to do so sharply after that regulation uh, came into place because it was a way to avoid it. And then finally, you know, and this is not causal evidence, but it's suggestive that firms that are issuing in emerging market or firms that are located in emerging markets, you know, maybe are able to get developed market investors uh, to buy their securities if they issue them through foreign affiliates, including uh, those in tax havens. One way to try to see this, let me just aggregate across all the Brazilian corporates, but you can see how it also holds for most of these five large Brazilian corporations. If here you look at the breakdown uh, of their total bonds that are issued, you'd see that 58% are issued in the name of the Brazilian parent itself, whereas about 35% is issued by a subsidiary or an affiliate in a tax haven, another 7% uh, elsewhere. If by contrast you then look at, from our data, developed market investor holdings of bonds issued by those Brazilian corporates, you can see that 70% vastly in excess, way disproportionate to the 35% universe is actually buying their tax haven subsidiary issued bonds. So this again, may be another reason why firms do this. And is it just, uh, you know, these few examples I've given? Well, no, you know, here I, I showed you Petrobras that we talked about, but um, you know, Gas Capital, so Gazprom has an affiliate in Luxembourg it uses to issue securities. You know, Alibaba is one of the examples of the capital control cases where they issue securities through the Cayman Islands. Medtronic is an example of one of those Irish or US tax inversions to Irish, to Ireland, where it's largely a US firm uh, that issues there. And so what our work does is it basically uh, looks across a number of commercial sources tries to glean information that allows us to associate the location of an immediate issuer in a tax haven, you know, like Petrobras International Finance in the Caymans, or like Gas Capital in Luxembourg, and to associate it with the parent's nationality, to associate PIFCO with Petrobras in Brazil, or to associate Gas Capital with Gazprom in Russia. How big a deal is all this when we aggregate up? It's pretty massive. So what this slide shows you is just as a share of total corporate bond and equity financing worldwide, what share can be uh, attributed to the issuance through these tax havens? In other words, if I add up the value of all corporate bonds issued in what we call tax havens, and I divide it by the global value uh, outstanding of all corporate bonds issued, you'll see that the number is something like 10% here in 2017, and not so much smaller uh, would be the, the equivalent calculation for equities. So this is really a big, massive deal. Okay. I want to make sure I'm clear on terminology before turning over uh, for the next module to Matteo. The slides have already used the term residency and nationality. What do these things mean? Well, like I said, you know, residency is, is going to capture the location of the immediate issuer of the security. Nationality is going to try to trace it all the way back to the ultimate parent. And there are plenty of cases in which residency and nationality might, you know, and will coincide. So let me just give you an example. Let's say we're thinking about a Brazilian government bond. And that could be a bond issued uh, in New York. It could be a bond denominated in US dollars. None of that matters because the immediate issuer is always the government of Brazil, which is always Brazilian. Um, the nationality and residential concepts will coincide there. Brazil never issues a bond in the name of a, you know, a, of a different foreign subsidiary, a government bond, and therefore these concepts are the same. Now there's plenty of cases where the concepts are different, but it's not obvious which one would prefer. So for example, uh, take Toyota Motors North America as an example. Toyota Motors North America issues a bond that by residency would be considered American, a US issued bond. By nationality, you would associate Toyota Motors North America with its Japanese parent. And so that would be associated, of course, with Japan. 
let's say you want to study, you know, uh, how the capital is deployed. And let's say Toyota North America raises financing in, you know, North America deliberately to spend it in North America. Well, then maybe the residency concept is the more relevant one. Alternatively, maybe you want to think about control and you want to think about the Japanese parent controlling and deciding how to allocate the capital raised by that North American subsidiary. Well, then nationality and Japan might be the right concept. So I do want to be clear, depending on the particular question of economic interest, you know, the right notion of statistic uh, that you want to look at, you know, it might change, it might vary. But what our first paper really focuses on, at least, is a case where I think the nationality basis is almost always more informative than the residency basis. And that's when there are these tax haven issuances. Because again, uh, you know, when a company like Petrobras issues in the Cayman Islands, um, it's almost never um, uh, you know, something that's of economic interest. In, in that case, for almost all questions that one would ask, uh, being able to associate it with Brazil would be more useful. And this is something that we'll talk about a little more later, but there's, there's many plausible notions of nationality one might wanna consider. You know, one might wanna think about the sales distribution of firms or the, distri the geographic distribution of who's guaranteeing the bonds. And this is something that Mateo will spend time on in the next session. Let me wrap up here and just, you know, allude to the slides so you can sort of see some summary statistics if you happen to want after the session to check on your own. But again, just to give you some of the names, you know, who are we talking about when we're talking about really large tax havens? Well, you know, by equity, we've got Bermuda and the Caymans, the Channels, Luxembourg, Panama, Hong Kong, you know, and it's common to find uh, issuances, you know, uh, worth trillions, literally, at least on the equity side, um, when aggregating across these, uh, these tax havens. And here's an equivalent snapshot of who is issuing and in which tax havens when it comes to bonds. So if you wanna get a feel for the basic summary statistics, here they are at the end of the deck. Finally, I just wanna wrap up by noting that, you know, tax havens have really become quite interesting to study for, for many reasons. So, you know, there's really interesting work looking at transfer pricing in tax havens as a way to shift profits. Uh, there's a, you know, people have studied wealth accumulation by particularly wealthy households using tax havens. And one thing that, that we're trying to emphasize is that yet another complementary way to think about tax havens is as a, a way, a conduit for firms to raise capital, particularly emerging market firms raising capital from foreign developed market investors. And to get a very broad sense of, you know, you know, sort of the literature and the state of play of research on tax havens, you know, here's a, a reading list to get you started that includes some of the seminal work there. Mm -hmm.